Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Connecting with Kim here on Tampa Bay Arts and Education Network. We're so thrilled you joined us today, and we have another great show coming up for you because our goal every week is to help you live your best life in our little corner of paradise. And before we get started, I want you to uh, like and follow my Facebook page, my Instagram account, and my X account, where you will find all the latest information on my show, my guests, and of course, my on air wardrobe, which is supplied by my sponsor, the Spring of Tampa Bay who provides safe spaces and empowering services for survivors of domestic violence and you can find this fashion at their thrift store on North Willow uh, and I want you to patronize their store because the net proceeds go to support their mission and I also want to say that you can catch the audio of our show on Sun Radio 96.3 FM and on your favorite streaming platform so Enough of the uh, administrivia, mm -hmm. let's get to the show. And we are so thrilled because we have someone back in the chair who we have not had the opportunity to have for a while because between me getting COVID last year and he also had some issues and then our schedules didn't match, but finally we got it together. So we are so happy to have back with us our returning guest, Mr. Michael Owen, who is the Hillsborough County Commissioner for District 4. Welcome back, Michael. Great to be here as always. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. So I know that um, there might be, I can't imagine why, but there might be some folks out there in um, District 4, because we have so many new residents in sure. Hillsborough County in Tampa Bay area that don't know who you are. So I'd really appreciate it if you just take a few minutes at the top of the show to kind of share a little bit about your journey. Sure. So they'll they'll have some way to know you better. Well, that's very true, and more people keep migrating and moving to uh, South County and East County every day. So um, my name is Michael Owen. I grew up in the Brandon area, uh, went to a mixture of public and private schools, uh, was a baseball player, thought I was going to play for the Atlanta Braves one day, uh, but uh, ended up getting a baseball scholarship to St. Leo. Uh, law school took me out to Michigan, uh, came back, uh, worked for a buddy at a small firm, and uh, my, uh, my, my business partner at the time ran for Congress and won, and I was telling him, you're crazy to ever run for political office. Why would you do that? You have a perfectly good life and a perfectly good law firm. And uh, now he's running a law firm, and I'm in political office. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of in a nutshell, uh, but I was raised in the Brandon area. Um, you know, I, it, it's one of my life's honors to represent District 4, the community that I was raised in, and uh, just loving it every day, being the representative for the district that I love. And we ought to take a moment, I think, to let people know, because District 4 is the largest district of all of the Hillsborough County right. uh, Board of County Commissioner District. So mm -hmm. give them a feel for the size yeah. of your district. Yeah, so it's the largest individual district. Obviously, the county right. wides have the whole county. Right. Uh, but as far as an individual district goes, it, it stretches from Apollo Beach in, in the south. Uh, all the way to Plant City. So it really represents a lot of unincorporated part of Hillsborough, but does take into account Plant City. I represent Plant City as well. So it's a, a large district and it's very diverse, right? Brandon and Riverview, I represent parts of that. That's arguably the urban core now. Uh, Apollo Beach I represent, which is your coastal water living. Uh, we've got the suburbs of Lithia, Sun City Center, retirement communities, uh, Plant City, and all of our agriculture communities. Uh, like close to 98% of all agriculture is grown in my district. So, uh, so there's a lot of different dynamics that come into play with that representation because the needs are so great and so different uh, with my constituents. Um, but something I, I know, I understand the heartbeat of my community because I was raised in it. And, uh, and like I said, it's, it's just such a privilege to represent all these folks. And then you've got the whole changing corridor, if you, if you will, mm -hmm. of why mama. I oh, mean, yeah. why mama in five years won't even look, I mean, it doesn't look like it looked 10 years ago. Yeah. And I've been in mm -hmm. Hillsborough County basically since my parents moved there in 1989. Yeah. It doesn't even look like that. And it doesn't even look like it looked three years ago. No, no, no doubt about it. So there's three areas, why mama, Balm, and then Ruskin, which is pretty much developed. Right. Uh, those three areas, when I was a kid, I grew up there, but I hardly knew they existed. We would ride our horses out there, get dropped off to ride motorcycles. Uh, it was an area that we never really knew anyone that lived there. I grew up there and d never knew a kid that lived from Waimama, for example. Um, but it's such beautiful land and beautiful property. I see why it's being developed. You have good access to 75 and 301. So it makes sense, but with that comes lots of challenges, right? Growth, roads, infrastructure, public safety, all those things that unfortunately were lagging behind of the growth and development. Uh, but right now, this board is committed to, to refocusing and repurposing ourselves on the roads, infrastructure, and public safety component. 
I know you guys are, and I, you know, I like to emphasize repeatedly to, especially to the new folks in our uh, community that are often frustrated by the infrastructure. You have to understand a lot of this inf a lot of this development was approved 25 to 30 years ago yeah. and what didn't happen in the intervening intervening time was past boards not this board but past mm -hmm. boards did not authorize or spend the money to upgrade the infrastructure yeah. so unfortunately we are behind the curveball a little bit but we're trying very hard that's right and I I'm someone I don't like to blame past administrations it's easy to do yeah uh, and it's true in, in this case but I like to say okay let's forget about that and let's focus what can we do right now? Mm -hmm. It's already too late. I understand on our roads and infrastructure and public safety, but we don't give up, right? Right. Let's refocus. Let's repurpose. And um, the folks in East, especially South County, where you live, have a good gripe on why things are the way they are. Uh, we have definitely put the cart before the horse. We haven't used impact fees timely. Um, and the areas that have been impacted have been lagging behind about a decade with the improvements that we should have had on the road. Mm -hmm. So um, most people I talked to, uh, I had an open primary, if you remember, when I ran for office. You did. So I knocked on Democrat doors, NPAs, independents, which was a really interesting thing because you, usually you don't do that. Uh, you know, you kind of stick to the NPAs and the independents in your party to win an election, right? But it was real eye-opening to me because there was a common thread with everybody, didn't matter what your party was, right. was what are you going to do about our roads? Right. And that was really the common thread for my district. And, and I understand it because I would say the same thing if someone knocked on my door. So Hillsborough County has, uh, what, what is the population of Hillsborough County right now? 1.5 million. 1.5 million and the budget for Hillsborough County is currently? Over 9.6 billion. Okay, so it's a big county mm -hmm. with population increasing. Yeah. Uh, we've and and we have we have experienced some of the woes of mm -hmm. population increasing, inflation, and so so forth. So, at from your perspective, what do you think are the largest issues facing our county right now? Yeah, well, I, I don't think just the roads and infrastructure are a problem in East and South County. It's a problem everywhere. I I went from Hyde Park to uh, that real nice neighborhood Avila during rush hour. It took mm -hmm. me an hour and ten minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's not very far. No. Uh, so. You know, a lot of people want to live here in Hillsborough County. Let's mm -hmm. face it; it's a it's a it's a county like no other. I'm not just saying it because I'm from here. Um, it's hard to find a county where you have such an amazing urban thriving core like Tampa, Water Street, West Shore area, places that are developing nicely now, um, and uh, and also agriculture communities and all this. It's an interesting dynamic, a it mixture. Is. Um, but but that's that's that I think is a problem everywhere. But obviously budgeting, you know, making prioritizing our budget in a certain way that we're putting the needs of the community, not special interests, in place. So um, I think this board is doing that. Um, but I think this coming budget is going to be an interesting budget cycle. It's going to be here before we know it. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, prioritizing and spending taxpayer dollars wisely is a big deal. Uh, also, um, you know, we've got some interesting things on our ballot that are going to be big for the whole county to look at. Uh, the school board looks like is going to go for a mill to increase your property taxes, and um, this may be a good segue into the CIT. Uh, the CIT is a community investment tax that we've had for close to 30 years. Right. It's a half penny on your surtax. You're paying it every day. You're paying it for your water. You're paying it for all these items. Uh, you may not know you're doing it, but it's been a critical need or a, cr a critical um, tax that we have collected for a long time. It was named the, the um, stadium tax because yeah. it was used a lot for Raymond James in 1996, right. but it does so much more. Uh, that's just a small portion that has been used of the, of the CIT. It goes for your roads, infrastructure, and the big thing that we're facing right now is obviously the schools, uh, that this CIT can only be used for capital improvements. Right. It's not used to pay people. It's purely for capital improvements. That's your roads, infrastructure, public safety, uh, stadiums for sure. Those are our assets. A lot of people don't know that we own Raymond James Stadium. We own Amelie Arena. And the economic impact of the revenue that we receive when, say, Taylor Swift comes to town is we can't afford almost not to have it. So we're going to have to make those decisions. But ultimately, the voters are going to decide, do we want to continue to fund the CIT? And do we want to give the school board more money? Well, and I think it's important to cover that, you know, because like you said, most people think of the CIT as the stadium tax. Mm, and there's yeah. still in some people's long-term residents here who went through that process sure. with Raymond James, there still is some 
they're not entirely happy about the way everything went down mm -hmm. with Raymond James Stadium. So they think of the CIT, you know, as the stadium tax, and there may be some negativity about the CIT. And I'm, I don't think I'm telling you anything you don't know because yeah. you've been here that whole time, too. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important to cover uh, with them and explain just exactly the myriad of project, uh, you know, the myriad of, of projects that the CIT funds because they don't know that. It's, it's so much, and that's one thing we're going to be determining as a board in this next month, how we write this referendum. Again, this is not a new tax. I think right. that's important. This it's is a continuation. It's a renewal of an existing tax that you pay. Right. And you're right. There's a lot of things baked in there. Uh, your pet resources, for example, that's in there. That's very important. Your parks and rec. You want parks to be improved. You want your parks to stay nice. A lot of that, you want capital improvements to your parks. Um, that's critical for that. So I think the thing that the voters need to understand is that whether you're for it or not, it's mm -hmm. up to you to decide. Uh, you know, we live in inflationary times. I understand that, uh, you know, we're trying to stretch dollars here. Yeah, everybody's you know? struggling. And, um, but I think the big thing to, to understand is that this is a tax that you're already paying. It's used only for capital improvements, nothing else. And, um, and what the school board's going for is a brand new mill on your, pro on your property taxes. Not to mention the CIT is not just paid by us, right? The CIT is paid for everybody who comes into our community. Mm -hmm. It's a surtax mm -hmm. on buying purchasing items to where a millage rate is a tax on you as a homeowner forever. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Big difference. Will the CIT, if it's renewed, if the taxpayers decide to renew it, will it also have a um, su be, have, be sunsetted? Will it have a date when it, when it expires? That's a great question. So we're, we're debating that right now. So. The last one was 30 years. I think that's way too long to have yeah, a tax. I agree. Uh, but there is an issue with bonding. Right. So we have a AAA rating, Hillsborough County, and um, kudos to all the prior boards that came before us. You know, I like to always, we always uh, well, they talk about it. Well, they credit where credit's due. Yeah, right? we, we've, we've got a AAA rating. We want to continue to keep that, which allows us to get good bond rates. And, for example, a road that I always talk about, Lithia Pinecrest Road, there's a high likelihood that I'm going to have to do some bonding for that road to get it done. And the, what I've asked for in the last meeting, I asked for a presentation to be brought before us on bonding. Because I think all the commissioners agree we need to be educated better on bonding. Right. Uh, because there's a lot of misinformation out there that, no, you don't need to stretch it out for, say, 20 years uh, in order to get bonding. You can do 10 years and still get your bonding. Uh, so we don't have good answers. So we're, I requested in the last meeting and got seven votes on it. Uh, for a presentation to be brought in the next board meeting by an expert on bonding. So uh, the jury's out, I guess you could say, on how my position on that right now um, because I do want the benefits of bonding, but at the same time, um, I would like this to be a much uh, smaller increment in years for a tax. This needs to come back before the, the voters uh, sooner than 30 years. I, I agree with you, and I like, I like that approach. If you're just joining me now on Connecting with Kim, my guest in the chair is Michael Owen, who is the Hillsborough County District 4 Commissioner. And um, he's been that for the last two years, and he is running for re-election this year. Uh, so we talked about the CIT, the size of the population, the diversity of interests, yeah. uh, which affect everybody in this county, in Hillsborough County in particular. Um, and so what are some other issues that you think are very, very important and that we should all be paying attention to? A lot of the big issues, I mean, we handled a lot of, of big things, as you probably know. Um, a couple initiatives I brought was related to the library cards. That went in, into place in February, basically now. Um, if you have a minor child, they can't access certain books that are the publisher says that are not for them unless you as a parent say yes and agree to it. Uh, that was important to decipher the difference between what was going on in the school board. Uh, this was not removing books or anything from the library. This was just putting parental controls just like Netflix, just like Disney has. It started off really nasty and then ended up where we, we kicked it to the library board. They came back, put a great implementation of, as far as how this is going to work. It's all available online on the, libra on the library uh, website. Uh, but just note for parents right now, if you want your kid to access more adult related material, you have to physically go in there now and change their library card. Okay. Uh, that was a big thing. Also the vaping, uh, the, we, we, we finally got that uh, to the finish line Kudos. here. Um, uh, so the land development code is about to be changed basically and what it's going to state is that you can't open up uh, a vape shop within 500 feet of a school. 
Uh, I'm a Republican, conservative. I don't like to get in the way of business. As a matter of fact, I like to cut red tape. But when you start seeing things that impact children, what's outside their door, that's kind of where I drew the line. And because uh, if you go by some of these stores, you see cartoon characters. You walk, I walked in them and Skittles and all that. They're not marketing to you and me. No, you know? they're marketing to, I mean, the future, the, the, yeah, future clients. Exactly. They're yeah. hooking future clients, right? Yeah. So those are two big things. And it's things. so dangerous. I can't understand why anybody would vape. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually like worse than smoking. It is, but I, if adults want to vape and you want to open up a vape shop, go for it, okay? My issue is just what, what is outside a uh, children's doors matter? What they see matters to them. And literally, these are on, when they walk to school, I can name a couple of them, and I'm not going to do that, but they're literally across the street from a school with cartoon characters all in the front right, door. Right, right. Uh, so that, the, the, what triggered me on that was basically parents calling me uh, right. within the community. Right, right. Uh, because I didn't really notice, to be honest with you. So people say, well, "How did you notice?" I said, "Well, my constituents called me." Right. And then I started noticing. Right. Uh, so those are those are really two two big things. And um, you know, like I said, w with the budget coming up, you know, we've got to make some really tough decisions on the budget. But also, we need to work closely with FDOT, Thea, the state, the federal government on getting grants. Uh, as you may have know, I uh, proposed us extending the Leroy Selman into Gibsonton right. Drive, Bloomingdale. I love it. Uh, and, and Big Ben Road. So yep. uh, it's a natural progression. Uh, the flyover makes sense. It was a huge success on the Gandhi. Yeah. Uh, so they're, they're geeked up to do it. You know, Thea and I think FDOT, but we're going to need federal dollars. So, um, so they're, they're moving for those grants. So that's something to watch out for on the horizon. Those are long-term projects. They're long-term because you're not going to extend the Selman uh, to that distance without it taking a while. It's going to be a decade-long project yeah. at least. But, but to be able to jump on that thing and head d uh, straight downtown on those express lanes would be, because just opening that express lane right when you get on uh, Selman from 75 North, yep. just adding that entrance right there to the big express deal. lanes, yeah. that was huge. Yeah, big deal, big deal. And if we can get this done, it will relieve. You know, I need folks heading, you know, um, West, you know, to 301. They, they try to avoid 301, and I understand it. It's you know? a parking lot. And so people are going down Lithia Pinecrest, Bell Shoals. They're literally going east when they need to get to Tampa just to take other arteries. And uh, so we've got to find a way. You know, Hillsborough County is a unique place because you have different needs in different pockets of the county. You know, if you, if you live in Tampa here, you want to move people. Find a way to move people. Right. Because you're urban core. That's right. My side of town, I need to move vehicles. You know, and I really do think that the county is understanding that better, or the city is understanding that better. There, there, there's been a huge divide between Tampa and the rest of the county, right? Which really shouldn't exist. No. Okay, because. But we are the unincorporated counties. Uh, the unincorporated parts of Hillsborough County are the largest part of. 1.1 million people. Exactly. Yeah, we, we, we so are, our needs are important. Our, our needs are, are important, and we don't want to pay taxes for benefits to Tampa, right? That we're not using. Right. That's kind of the mentality. <laughs> but at the same time, here's what we have to remember. A healthy Tampa is a healthy Hillsborough County. I totally agree. And 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 to have these stadiums and to have these the, the, these residents and the Water Street, how it's taken off, and the Riverwalk extension, that is good for it's our job center, our job creation center. So what I try to tell my folks on my side of town is, it doesn't have to be us against them. Right. You know, it can be we we all need to play in the sandbox. Good, understand the needs of each part of the county, respect each other's different opinions. And I see that changing a lot. When, when that all for transportation tax when was going down, I think it caused a lot of division. And so now we're just trying to repair that a little bit. Well, we should say, uh, spend a minute on that because the disposition of that tax uh, that they've been holding in Tallahassee for, what, two years? Yep. Uh, has finally happened. So yep. you know what? You want to talk about that for Yeah, it? sure. I mean, we're, there, none of it's going to be used for road widening. So it's all going to be the, the monies that are going to be available that aren't going to be go back to the voters, whether it's tax holiday or however they're going to do it. Uh, and to lawyers as well. Uh, the the <laughs> remaining dollars are going to be used for um, road improvements. The only the only disappointing part about that, um, as a taxpayer and resident of this county, is that it's less than half of what was collected, and that's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going to reserve my disappointment uh, and just kind of focus. Well, I, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to say that, but I can. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you loud and clear. Um, you know, it, it, the question is: is you know, do people necessarily want? money back in some way, your, your folks that are, you know, Joe Six Pack and the folks working every day that have already paid it and forgot about it, would they rather have their potholes fixed and roads paved? Probably, yeah. Yeah. But, but, um, but at the same time, it was considered, whether you agree with this or not, an illegal tax. 
So whether you agree with it, that what it was or not, that's what the Supreme Court ruled. Right. So it has to be treated that way. Right. And that's why the legislature, not us, got to spend that money. Right. And I think that's the right decision as far as how the money, who, who had the authority to spend the money. Now, whether I agree with the way it's being done or not, that's another question. But, um, but is there any wiggle room there, or is it completely done now? I don't. I don't want to say anything's completely done. We're we're on the you know the very heels of the uh, of the decision that was made. I do know the road projects are already out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the East County ones. I'm waiting on the South County ones. Yeah. Uh, so um, so a lot of the road projects that are real critical, and important, I think, are going to be funded. But uh, the big thing the big thing is the road widening is so expensive. Road paving and preparing potholes not near as expensive. Widening. Obviously, cost of materials and labor has gone up, but the big thing is is acquiring the corridors and the property to widen the roads. Well, and then and uh, you know you you talk about this a lot, and mm -hmm. I wanted to say to you, wherever we can, Michael, wherever we can, mm -hmm. let's use the islands because we already own that land. Yeah, that's we right. already paid for that land. We yeah. don't have to buy any new land. Yeah. We just. Yeah. Well, we, we, it, we've been smart in some places, not in others. Gibsonton, for example, we own the corridors around the road. So we were thoughtful enough, uh, whenever that time was, to purchase those corridors. So now when we road widening, all we're paying for is the labor and cost. We're not purchasing the land. Good. The example I gave you earlier with Lithia Pinecrest, not the case. Not the case. We have to put, and that's yeah. why it's a $214 million project. Yeah. And Gibsonton Drive's an $80 million project. Yeah. Big difference. More yeah. than double the cost because we own the corridor. So these mistakes were made a long time ago. Yeah. Uh, and it's spilt milk now. Yeah. Uh, so no, no point yeah. crying over yeah. that, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. But I would like to just throw out one thing for your consideration mm -hmm. um, is that uh, in what they did for Big Bend, mm -hmm. uh, great. But uh, what I'd like to throw out for consideration is maybe uh, because they kind of took the traffic off of Big Ben, which is great, mm -hmm. and now they have that really long, uh, to go north on 75, yep. that really long uh, set of lanes, yep. two lanes, that finally narrowed down to one. Um, it kind of has, I'm sure you've heard this from other mm -hmm. people, it's kind of removed the traffic jam off Big Ben and kind of stuck it on to right there on 75, which yeah. is still the same three lanes it was before. Yeah. I think in that maybe FDOT wanna, might want to consider going back in there and putting one of those lights that meters meters the idea. access onto yeah. the onto 75 okay. because yeah. that that becomes a really big traffic jam in the morning. Yeah. Once you get by that, you're great. But yeah. just meet because those are really long. Yeah. Lanes and they could very easily set the meter there. Yeah, that's um, I have heard that. Requ I have that I, request. I bet you have because a lot um, of people drive that. I and drive and all the time. A lot of people think because there certain roads aren't county roads that there's nothing we can do. A lot of no, people, and that's not the case. N sure, I can't make the decision, but our county's relationship with Secretary Gwynn, uh, with FDOT, with uh, Thea is very strong, mm -hmm. extremely strong. Yes. They are, they, we, they are partners with us. They are. And, um, and He's we, a great guy. Yeah, yeah, he is. He is. I don't Secretary know if you've had Gwynn. him yeah. on the show. I haven't yet. He, oh, I'm going to because I did, yeah. he did the Franklin Bridge tour with me. Smart guy. Yeah, really, really smart, smart guy. And so I think an, another thing to, to jump into, and I don't know how much time we have, is we our, our TPOs becoming regional, you know. I, I'm very much for that. Okay, so what, what's likely going to happen is that we're going to become one region, basically Pasco, Hillsboro, and Pinellas. And what this means is we'll be number one in the South, basically, when we request a grant. And um, some folks in the city aren't necessarily for that, but uh, but for me, I am. And and I think that's where we're le we're going to. Uh, I think that's going to be a big deal in the coming years for us getting a lot of grants for those those projects uh, that are off cross towns or, or state roads and things like that because when you become number one in the region you're prioritized a little differently. Well we call ourselves Tampa Bay mm -hmm. and so let's be honest about what Tampa Bay means. Mm -hmm. Tampa Bay means Hillsborough, Pinellas, and Pasco mm -hmm. at a minimum, yeah. right? At a minimum that's what Tampa Bay well, means. Well I'd also tell you that Tampa Bay is none of that. Tampa <laughs> Bay is a place in the water. Well it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we call the region Tampa Bay yeah, yeah. And, and we want that to be mm -hmm. something people identify I sure. immediately with yeah. right yeah. Uh, and I think they do so you know the all those counties each one of whatever those counties are doing impacts the other sure because each those people are living working traveling and enjoying the amenities of all those counties yeah and, and the solution is proportionality of the board so we're the big guys on the block right we have Port Tampa Bay we have the airport they don't have any of the regional powerhouses that 
that we have, okay? So we should have more people that are on the board making the decisions, and not the other counties agree on that. So um, that's really the big kicker is, is proportionality with how many people will serve on this regional board, and then whether or not we allow folks like the port or uh, the, the airport mm -hmm. to be on the board, to make, be on the board of voting members of the board. Right. I think the answer should be yes. Uh, some people think no. Uh, so some people think it should be all elected officials. And well, and and well, that's another question: mm -hmm. Is it all elected officials, or will you actually have some uh, consumer or resident or taxpayer input on the, on that on that board? Yeah, there'll be like Thea and all those folks can be will be on it, but not voting. Okay. Okay. But port. And this is my position. Port and airport voting members okay. because they're an economic engine. Absolutely, more people. I think some months. Well, it just got voted number one, right? TPA got voted two, year, two yeah. years, in a row. Two years in a row. Two years in a row. Two years in a row. And Lapano's leaving, and, yeah, and Joe yeah. Lapano's retiring yeah. now. Yeah, our airport is really. I pity the person that's coming in behind him. I know. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't because you're taking over something that's. In well, place. it's working, yeah. but now it's like it's so good. What am I going to do? Just preserve it. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's really a great experience to go to the Tampa Airport compared it to is. other airports. And um, I didn't know we were considered a large airport, but we're the number, we've been two years in a row, J.D. Power, uh, number one largest airport in the United, in North America. Yeah. North America. I know, it's United great. North America. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. And our port, Tampa Bay, I serve on the board. I know you uh, do. Our port is second to none as well. Well, we're just about out of time, so mm -hmm. is there any last message you want to share with our listening and watching audience? Yeah, I just say uh, pay real attention to, to these referendums that are going to go on the ballot. Uh, they're very, very important and critical. Uh, if your roads and infrastructure and public safety are things you want to really get done at a, a, a quicker than normal, uh, you're going want to want to vote yes on that CIT. Um, and then really take a look at what the school board's doing. Uh, they're they're, they're going to propose what it looks like, another mill on your property taxes. Those are two big things to really research and understand and not get input or get some input from your friends, but make that decision yourself. And, you know. and I can't emphasize this enough, people. When there's a referendum on the ballot, don't read what's just on the ballot. Mm -hmm. Read the actual referendum word for word because that will tell you exactly what's going to happen with that money. And, and I don't know what that, how it's going to read yet. We're deciding that in the next month. So right. we're going to get a proposed referendum coming up here soon. So I can't quite give you the nuts and bolts, but be on the lookout for it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we're out of time. I can't thank you enough, Michael, for being our guest today. It's been a long time. We're so happy to have you back. Uh, that's all we have time for on this edition of Connecting with Kim. We want to thank our sponsor, the Spring of Tampa Bay. And we want to thank you, the watchers and listeners of the Connecting with Kim show. And come back next week for another edition. Bye.